Hi everybody, it's Miss Allen. We're back for another edition of Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library by Chris Grabenstein. We ended last time just before chapter eight. So we just finished chapter seven when uh, Mr. Lemoncello was showing up to do the uh, judging for the contest to be able to spend the night in his uh, new library. So here we go. Over on the side of the stage, a shoe that looked like a peeled open banana appeared from behind a curtain. When it landed, the shoe burped, squeaked. As the second banana shoe burped, squeaked onto the floor, Kyle looked up and there he was, Mr. Lemoncello. He had loose floppy limbs and was dressed in a three-piece black suit with a bright red tie. His black broad brimmed hat was cocked at a, cord, at a crooked angle atop his curvy white hair. Kyle was so close, he could sly, see a sly twinkle sparkling in Mr. Ch Lemoncello's coal black eyes. Treading very carefully, Mr. Lemoncello walked toward the podium. The burp squeaks in his shoes seemed to change pitch depending on how hard he landed on his heels. He added a couple of little jig steps, a quick hop, and a stutter step skip. And yes, his shoes were squeaking out a song. Pop goes the weasel. On the pop, Mr. Lemoncello popped up behind the podium. The crowd went wild. Mr. Lemoncello politely bowed and said very softly, Thank you. Thank you. Grassy, grassy. He bent forward so his mouth was a, maybe an inch away from the microphone. Buongiorno, boys and girls. He spoke very timidly, very slowly. This is how my mama and my papa teach me to speak a daily English. He wiggled his ears, straightened his back. But then, he said in a crisp, clear voice, I went to Alexandria Public School, Public Library, where a wonderful librarian named Mrs. Gail Tobin helped me to learn how to speak like this. If two witches were watching two watches, which witch would watch which witch? Which watch? I can also speak while upside down and underwater, but not today, because I just had this suit dry cleaned and do not want to get it wet. Mr. Lemoncello bounced across the stage like a happy grasshopper. Now then, children, if I may call you that, which I must because I have not yet memorized all of your names, even though I am working on it, what do you think is the most amazingly incredible thing you'll find inside your wondrous new library? Besides, of course, all the knowledge you need to do anything and everything you ever want or need to do. No one said anything. They were too mesmerized by Mr. Lemoncello's rat-a-tat words. Would it be A, robots silently whizzing their way through the library, restocking the shelves? B, the electronic learning center with three dozen plasma screen TVs all connected to flight simulators and educational video games? Or C, the Wonder Dome, lined with 10 giant video screens. It can make the whole building feel like a rocket ship blasting off into outer space. The game room, someone shouted. The robots, the video drone. Mr. Lemoncello raced back to the podium and made a buzzing noise into the microphone. Ooh, sorry, the correct answer is, and not just because of Winn-Dixie, D, all of the above. Crowd went wild. Mr. Lemoncello whirled around to face his head librarian. Dr. Zanchenko, will you kindly help me pass out our first 12 library cards? It was time to announce the essay contest winners. Mr. Zanchenko placed, excuse me, Dr. Zanchenko placed a stack of 12 shiny cards on the podium in front of Mr. Lemoncello. Please, he said, as I call your name, come join me on stage. Miguel Fernandez, yes! Miguel jumped up out of his seats. Akimi Hughes, woohoo! Kyle was thrilled to see his two best friends be the first ones to be called to the stage. Andrew Plickerman, Bridget, Brigitte Wodge, Sierra Russell, Yasmin Smith Schneider, Yasmin squealed when her name was called, Sean Keegan, Haley Daly, Rose Vermetti, and Kyla, Kayla Corson. The 10 kids, all the same age as Kyle, were up on stage with his idol, Mr. Lemoncello. He was not. Only two more chances. And as reading his mind, Mr. Lemoncello said, Only two more. And he tapped a pair of library cards on the podium. Charles Chillington. Gosh, really? He dashed up to the podium and started pumping Mr. Lemoncello's hand. Thank you, sir. This is such an honor. Truly, I mean that. Thank you, Charles. May I have my hand back? I need to flip over this final card. Of course, sir. But I cannot wait to spend the night in your library. Or as I like to call it, your antitheum. Because, as I said in my essay, when you open a book, you open your mind. Finally, Charles the Brown Noser let go of Mr. Lemoncello's hand and went over to line up with the other winners. And last but not least, said Mr. Lemoncello, Kyle Keeley. 
Kyle could not believe his ears. He thought he was dreaming. And then Akimi started waving for him to come on up. Dazed, Kyle made his way up the steps to join the others on stage. Mr. Lomoncello handed Kyle a library card. His name and the number 12 were printed on the front. Two book covers, I Love You, Stinky Face, and The Napping House were on the back. Let's all pose for a picture, please, said the principal. When everyone moved into position for the photograph, Kyle found himself standing right next to Mr. Lomoncello. He swallowed hard. I'm a big fan, sir, he said, his voice kind of shaky. Why, thank you. And remind me, you are? I'm Kyle, sir. Kyle Keeley. Ah, yes, the boy who proved what I've always known to be true. The game is never over till it's over. Boing. So that worked, didn't it? Kyle couldn't wait to tell his family the good news. I won the essay contest. He showed them his shiny new card. Congratulations, said his mom. Way to go, said his dad. His brothers, Curtis and Mike, were more interested in Kyle's other card, his $500 Lemoncello gift card. It's good for 12 months, said Kyle. But you need to use it now, said Mike. We need to go to the store tonight so you can buy me Mr. Lemoncello's kooky wacky hockey. I can't. Why not? I have to show my library card at the store to cash it in. And um, I'm grounded, remember? You know, Kyle, his dad said, looking at his mother, who nodded, since you worked extra hard and did such a bang-up job on your essay, I think we might consider suspending your punishment. Really? Really? Kyle's mom and dad smiled at him, the way they smiled whenever Mike won a football game or Curtis won the science fair. So, after supper, all five Keeleys piled into the family van and headed off to the local toy store. Lemoncello's hockey game is awesome, said Mike as they drove to the store, especially when the penguins play to the polar bears. I'm hoping to find a classic board game, mused Curtis. Mr. Lemoncello's bewilderling, buffling, excuse me, Mr. Lemoncello's bewilderling, bewilderling, ba baffling bibliomania. Is that about the Bible? asked their dad from behind the wheel. Not exactly, said Curtis, although the Bible, especially a rare Gutenberg edition, may be one of the treasures you must find and collect, because the object of the game is to collect rare and valuable books by the penguins and kooky wacky hockey aren't from Pittsburgh like in NHL, said Kyle, said Michael, cutting off Curtis. They're from Antarctica, and the polar bears, they're from Alaska. Kyle had decided to divvy up his gift card five ways, to give everybody, including his mom and dad, $100 to play with. As soon as they entered the toy store, the family split up, cruising the aisles with their own shopping carts. His mom was going to upgrade to Mr. Lemoncello's restaurant rush. His dad was looking for one of Mr. Lemoncello's complicated what-if historical games. What if the Romans had won the American Civil War? Kyle hung with Curtis and Mike for a while. Being the one with the gift card made him feel like he was suddenly their big brother. Mike quickly found his PlayStation hockey game, and Curtis was in geek heaven when he finally found the bibliomania. They only have one left, he gushed, tearing off the cellophane shrink wrap and prying open the lid. He sat down right in the middle of the store and unfolded the go game board on his lap. You see, you start under the rotunda in this circular reading room, then you go upstairs and enter each of these ten chambers where you have to answer a question about a book. Hmm, I think I hear Mom calling me, said Kyle. She must need the gift card. Enjoy, and Kyle took off. The store will close in fifteen minutes announced a voice from the ceiling speakers. Kyle flew up and down the aisles and grabbed a couple of board games he didn't own yet, including Mr. Lemoncello's absolutely incredible Iron Horse, a game where you built your own transcontinental railroad, complete with locomotive game pieces that actually puff smoke. As Kyle was doing some quick math to see if he'd spend his hundred dollars, Charles Chillington rolled up an aisle with a cart crammed full with five hundred dollars worth of loot. Games stacked on top of games were practically spilling over the sides. Mr. Lemoncello's phenomenal picture word puzzler, one of Kyle's favorites, was teetering on top. Hello, Keeley, said Chillington with a smirk. He looked down at the three games sitting in the bottom of Kyle's shopping cart. Just getting started? No, I shared my gift card with my family. Really? Well, that was a mistake, wasn't it? Kyle was about to answer when Chillington said, So long, see you on Friday. Kyle wasn't 100% sure, but he think Charles might have muttered, Loser. Since the store was about to close, Kyle headed toward the checkout lanes. When he passed the customer service department, he saw Haley Daly. No, Kyle heard Haley Daly say in a hushed tone to the clerk working in the returns window. I do not want to return these items for store credit. I would prefer cash. 
Kyle finally found his family, showed the cashier his library card, and paid for everything with a single swipe of his gift card. You know, Kyle, his dad said as the family walked across the parking lot, your mother and I are extremely proud of you. Writing a good essay isn't easy. Maybe you'll be an author someday, said his mom. Then you could write books that'll be on the shelves of the new library. Thanks, little brother, said Curtis, practically hugging his bibliomania book. Yeah, said Mike. This was awesome. Way to win one for the team. Best family game night ever, joked their dad. Kyle was enjoying his rare moment of glory, playing Santa Claus for his whole family. As the week dragged on, Friday night and the library lock-in started to remind Kyle of Christmas, too. It felt like it would never come. And then finally it did. Chapter 10. Now this is what I call a party, said Kyle's mother, as she helped herself to a bacon-wrapped shrimp from a tray bearing a being carried by a waiter in a tuxedo. Kyle and his parents were in a crowded ballroom of the Parker House Hotel for the Mr. Lemoncello Library Gala Grand Opening Reception. The Parker House was located across the street from the old Gold Leaf Bank building and the cluster of office buildings, craft shops, clothing stores, and restaurants called Old Town. I'm going to see if I can find a Kimmy, Kyle said to his mom and dad. Give her our congratulations, said his mom. We're proud of her too, said dad. Kyle made his way through the glittering sea of dressed up adults. Even though his parents had put on fancy clothes for the reception, Kyle was wearing something comfortable to go exploring in. As instructed by the lock-in guide he had received on Wednesday, he packed a sleeping bag and a small suitcase with a change of clothes, toiletries, and yes, as requested, an extra pair of underpants. Kyle saw Sierra Russell all alone in the corner near a clump of curtains. It didn't look like her mother had come to the party with her. Sierra, of course, had her nose buried in a book. Kyle just shook his head. The girl was about to spend the night in a building filled with books, and she was skipping all the free food and pops so she could read. That was just nutty. Haley Daly, wearing a sparkling blouse, was posing for a wall of photographers who wanted to snap her picture. Her mother was at the party, too. While the cameras were focused on Haley's smile, Mrs. Daly wrapped up a couple of chicken kebabs in a napkin and slipped them into her purse. Now Kyle saw Charles Killington. Poor guy, must not have read the memo about comfortable clothes. He was still wearing his khakis and a blazer, just like his dad. Kyle f figured the Chillington family must own like 300 pairs of pleated tan pants. Hey, Kyle, Kimmy waved at him from a near fake shrub curled to look like a silly straw. Yeah, said Kyle. Do you remember to, did you remember to bring your library card? Yep, Kyle said, pulling it out of his pocket. Huh, said a Kimmy. I got different books on the back of mine. One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish by Dr. Seuss, and Nine Stories by J.D. Salinger. Guess they're like baseball cards, said Kyle. They're all different. Hey, you guys, Miguel Fernandez, more excited than usual, which was saying something, pushed through the knob, mob to join them. Did you try these puffy cheese things? Nah, said Kyle. I'm sticking to food I recognize. The puffy cheese things are called fromage tarlettes, said Andrew Peckelman, coming over to join them. Huh, said Kyle. Good to know. The waiter passed by with a tray loaded down with small boxes of Mr. Lemoncello's anagram cracker cookies. Ooh, I love these, said Kyle, taking a box off the platter and opening it. These cookies are in the shapes of letters. You have to see how many words you can spell. Cool, said Miguel, snagging a fistful of cookies out of Kyle's box. Tastes good, too. Yep, said Kyle, but the more you eat, the harder the game gets. Why, asked Andrew Pickleman. Less letters, said Akimi, snatching two B's and a Q and wolfing them down. Mmm barbecue flavored. Cal spread out the remaining cookies in his palm. U-N-F-E-H-A-B. He grinned as he deciphered an easy anagram. Have fun. Sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Dr. Sanchenko, dressed in a bright red suit, strode to the center of the ballroom. May I have your attention, please? Mr. Lemoncello will be arriving shortly to say a few brief words. After that, I will escort the 12 essay contest winners across the street to the library. Therefore, children, might I suggest that you eat up. Food and drink are not permitted in anywhere in the library except for the Book Nook Cafe, conveniently located on the first floor. Miguel grabbed a few more puffy cheese things. When she thought no one was looking, Mrs. Daly shoved a napkin bundle of bacon-wrapped shrimp into her purse. Akimi nibbled a couple of chocolate-dipped pretzel sticks. Aren't you going to grab some more grub, she said to Kyle. No, thanks. I only like food I can play with. One last thing, announced Mr. Z Dr. Zanjenko. We, of course, want our winners to have fun tonight. However, I must insist that each of you respect my number one rule. Be gentle. 
which each other and most especially the library's books and exhibits. Can you do that for me? Yes, shouted all the winners, except for Charles Chillington. He said indubitably. Good thing the library has dictionaries, muttered Akimi. Half the time, it's the only way to figure out what Charles is saying. Suddenly, all the adults in the ballroom started clapping. Mr. Limoncello, looking like a beanpole wearing a tailcoat and a tiny birthday party fireman's hat, strode into the room through a side door. Thank you, thank you, he said, stretching the elastic band to raise his kid-sized hat and tipping it toward the crowd. You are too kind. Then he let go of that hat. It snapped back with a sharp flack. As Dr. Zanchenko informed you, I'd like to say a few brief words. Here they are. Short, memorandum, and underpants. He let us pause, let us pause to remember the immortal words of Dr. Seuss. The more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Now, children, Mr. Lemoncello flourished his arm toward the ballroom doors. It's time to go across the street. Your amazing, spectacular new public library awaits. Chapter 11. Eager to see what was inside the new library, the 12 essay contest winners quickly gathered behind Dr. Zanchenko. This way, children, said the head librarian, follow me. The children cheered as they marched out of the ballroom, all toting their sleeping bags and suitcases. There was more cheering, plus some hooting and hollering, when they reached the hotel lobby and went out the revolving doors into the street. The new public library, with its glistening golden dome, took up half a downtown block, its back butting up against the old-fashioned office tower. The building was a boxy fortress, three stories high, with the stately columns that acted like bookends, because the windowless walls had been painted to resemble a row of giant books lined up on a shelf. It's like a majestic Greek temple, gushed Miguel. And the world's biggest bookcase, added Sierra Russell, who had finally put away her paperback. Velvet ropes lined a path across Main Street that led to the red carpet leading up a flight of steps to the arched entryway and seriously steel, not to mention round front door. Kyle had to smile when he saw that it was tethered to the railings on either side of the steps. Balloons. A big bruiser, maybe 6'4", 250 pounds, and sunglasses and black sports coat, stood in front of the library's circular door, which had several large valve wheels like you'd see on a submarine hatch. The burly guard wore his hair in long, ropey dreadlocks. What's with the door? asked Haley Daly, who, of course, had pushed her way to the front. It looks like it came from a bank vault or something. It is the door from the old gold leaf bank's walk-in vault, said Dr. Zenchenko. It weighs 20 tons. Akimi turned around and whispered, My dad designed the structure support for that thing. Check out the hinges. Kyle nodded. He was impressed. Why a do vault door, asked Kayla Corson. Because, said Dr. Zanchenko, one sleepy Saturday, when Mr. Lemoncello was your age, he was working in the old public library over on Market Street. He was so lost in his thoughts, he did not hear the sirens as police cars raced past the library to the bank, where a burglar alarm had just been activated. This door remains a reminder to us all. Our thoughts are safe when they are inside a library. Not even a bank robbery can disturb them. Miguel was nodding like crazy. He could relate. It also helps us keep our most valuable treasures secure. There aren't any windows, observed Andrew Pickleman, probably to stop bank robbers from busting in. But shouldn't you people have added windows when you turned it into a library? A library doesn't need windows, Andrew. We have books, which are windows into the worlds we never even dreamed possible. An open book is an open mind, added Charles Chillington. That's what I always say. Dr. Zinchenko pulled out a bright red note card. Before we enter, please listen very carefully. Your library cards are the keys to everything you will need, she read. The library staff is here to help you find whatever it is you're looking for. She smiled slightly, tucked the card back into her pocket, turned to the security guard and said, Clarence, will you do the honors? With pleasure, Dr. Z. Clarence turned one giant wheel, spun another and cranked a third. Noiselessly, the 20, tw 20 ton door swung open. The first thing Kyle could see inside was a trickling fountain in a grand foyer of brilliant white marble. The fountain featured its life-size statue of Mr. Lemoncello standing on a lily pad in the middle of a shallow reflecting pool ten feet wide. His head was tilted back so water could spurt up from his mouth in an arc. Kyle noticed a giant, a quote, chiseled in the statue's pedestal. Knowledge not shared remains unknown. Luigi L. Lemoncello. 
Beyond the fountain, through an arched walkway, was a huge room filled with desks. When everyone had shuffled into the entrance hall, Dr. Zenchenko turned to the security guard. Clarence? Clarence hauled the heavy steel door shut. Kyle heard the whirl of spinning wheels and the clink of grinding gears and a reverberating clunk. Wow, said Miguel. Talk about lock in. I'll be in the control room, Dr. S Dr. Z, said security guard. Very well, Clarence. Clarence disappeared behind a red door. Now then, children, said the librarian, if you will all follow me into the rotunda reading room. As the rest of the group started filing into the gigantic singular room, Kyle checked out a display case beside the red door. A sign over it said, Staff Picks, Our Most Memorable Reads. A dozen books were lined up on four shelves. One cover in the middle of the bottom row caught Kyle's eye. It showed a football player wearing a number 19 jersey, dropping back to hurl a pass. Kyle made a mental note of the title. In the pocket, Johnny Unitas and me. Tomorrow morning when the lock-in was over, he might use his library card to check it out for his big brother, Mike. Wow! Everybody gasped as they stepped into the rotunda reading room and looked up. The entire underside of the dome looked like a space is seen from looked like space as seen from the Hubble telescope. A dusty spiral nebula billowed up, a galaxy of stars twinkled, and meteorites whizzed across the ceiling. Oh! The space imagery on the ceiling dissolved into ten distinct panels, each one becoming a display of swirling graphics. Those are the ten categories of the Dewey Decimal System, whispered Miguel, standing awestruck. See the panel with Cleopatra, the guy cl mountain climbing, and the Viking ship sailing across it? That's for the 900s and 999s, history and geography. Cool, said Kyle. Tucked beneath the ten screens in arched niches were incredible 3D statues glowing a ghastly, ghostly green. I believe those are holographic projections, said Andrew Peckelman, waving up at a statue that was waving down at him. The room under the dome was huge. It was singular, with a round desk at the center that was surrounded by four rings of reading desks. Kyle saw that half of the rotunda was filled with floor-to-ceiling bookshelves. The other half had balconies on the second and third floors that reminded him of open atrium of a hotel he and his family had stayed at once. While everybody was gawking at the architecture, Mr. Dr. Zanchenko said the words Kyle had been waiting all day to hear. Now then, who's ready for our first game? So we'll find out next time what game they play and how do they get how do they escape from Mr. Cello's library? Thank you for joining me. Make sure you check out our website for all kinds of resources and links to other books that you can download and read for free with some with your library card and some without. So make sure you check out our webpage at billingslibrary.org and continue to follow us on social media. Have a good week.